I've been playing a lot of Pizza Tower recently. It's a damn good game and has so far been worth the 20 bucks I spent on it. The fast paced yet fluid gameplay combined with the emphasis on exploration and discovery really makes the game addictive, and cathartic in a way. Something about being a fat Italian man running at Mach 4 through a giant tower filled with living gobs of cheese and walking pepperoni is insanely satisfying. All of that combined with an art style heavily inspired by 90s cartoons gives Pizza Tower its own identity that will help it enter the gaming hall of fame, alongside other top tier indie games like Shovel Knight and Celeste. The best part is, while the game can be beaten in a little over an hour, there's lots to do and plenty of challenges to face. You can go for all the P-Ranks, incredibly hard challenges that require mastery over Pepino's moveset and memorization of the level's layout. You could try and get as many points in a level as possible, seeing just how high that counter could go. You can refuse to sugarcoat the noise during his boss fight. Though that does get me thinking, what would the game be like if you did sugarcoat it? This is Sugary Spire, a Pizza Tower fan game made in 2022 that seeks to answer that very question. While maintaining the core gameplay of Pizza Tower, it flips everything else on its head. Instead of playing as Pepino, with your rival as the noise, you play as the ever so anxious yet cheerful Pizza Elf, and your rival is the chaotic, pizza-slinging maniac Pizzano. Rather than having a focus on pizza, it focuses on sugar, with all kinds of sweets featured prominently, much like Pizza Tower did with pizza toppings. Levels are centered around one kind of sweet, whether it be cotton, molasses, wafers, or hardened sugar. Sugary Spire has it all, and by it all I mean just those four. Much like the first floor of Pizza Tower, the only publicly available demo for Sugary Spire features four levels, those being Entryway, Cotton Town, Molasses Swamp, and Sugar Shack Mines. No boss, however, so you only have to barrel through four levels to see those credits. Here's how I'm going to review Sugary Spire. I'll go through each level individually, talk about their gimmicks, layout, design, all that, and in between each level I'll talk about some smaller parts of Sugary Spire, like the controls, visual flair, music, etc. Before we jump in however, I need to clarify a few things first. I imagine many of you are wondering two things. Why are you covering a Pizza Tower fan game before Pizza Tower itself, and why is Sugary Spire running so slowly in one clip but perfectly fine in the next? Here's the deal. I was originally going to write a review of Pizza Tower, in fact I already have, but the main issue comes from my computer's lack of a GPU. I can play Pizza Tower just fine, but when I try to record it, the game slows significantly. Here's what it looks like. Here's what it looks like when I'm playing as Pizza L. Here's what it looks like when I'm playing as The Noise. Here's the purple guy. I didn't want to play through 21 levels and 5 bosses like this all for a 20 minute review, so I settled for the next best thing playing through four levels of a fan game for a 20 minute review. I did get Zern to record the Pizza Tower gameplay you saw at the beginning, but I'm not going to make her play the entire game again for my own review. You'll have to wait until I get a GPU to see that Pizza Tower review. Anyway, let's start actually reviewing this game. After a short tutorial teaching us how to jump, grab, crouch, run, super jump, and ground pound, we're on to the first level, Entryway. <laughs> Did you like that level card? Those aren't in the demo, so I made that one myself, along with the others in this video. Anyway, Entryway is the first level in Sugary Spire, acting as its jaw and gutter. The level is set in a worn down city, with tons of construction work happening all around, followed by a quick visit to the city's outskirts. It's a good introduction to many of the game's enemies and key mechanics. Here you'll be introduced to Confecti and Secrets. Confecti are this game's toppings. Five sugary little fellas that give you 1,000 points when collected, and will presumably give you money to unlock a boss gate in the final build. The five confecti are marshmallow, chocolate, s'more, gummy worm, and candy. Secrets function exactly like they do in earlier builds of Pizza Tower. Dig through a breakable wall, or walk behind a fake wall to find the door to a secret. There's three in each level, and each level's secrets has its own theme. The secrets are focused on making use of that level's gimmick, and often have you loop back to the entrance to the secret to leave. Entryway's secrets are hidden on a ledge near the chocolate confecti, through a wall in the room down and around, and hidden under a girder on the right edge of Nailed It. As for the enemies introduced in Entryway, you meet the main three enemies you'll see in every level of Sugary Spire. The gum slimes are globs of sentient gum that roll around and don't do much. They replace cheese slimes and function exactly the same. Good old combo fodder. 
s'more knights function exactly like Pizza Tower's fork knights. They hurt you from the front, but can be stunned via a jump, seeing Pizzell run at Mach 3, or just grabbed from behind. Googly juices replace the Swedish monkeys, but function a little differently. Rather than periodically leaving banana peels around, googly juices drop puddles of juice when killed, which will cause Pizzell to trip and bounce around if stepped on. Intriguingly, googly juices actually have a different color for each level they're in. For instance, they're bright green in Entryway. Entryway's layout isn't too confusing. If you're playing Sugary Spire after getting used to Pepino's moveset, use this level as a chance to orient yourself with Pizzell's abilities. Pizzell's scooter can only go up a wall so far, but she can jump onto an adjacent wall to keep climbing. There aren't any required super jumps, only one required ground pound, but there's plenty of mock running to do, especially during the escape sequence. The last room of Entryway features Gummy Harry, a giant red gummy bear who you kill to activate Sugar Rush. When that timer starts ticking down, now's the time to book back to the entrance. A few gummy blocks will have swapped states, allowing you access to the candy confecti, and forcing you to take slightly different routes. And that's all Entryway has to offer. Good level to start off with, but much like John Gutter, it's very easy to blaze through once you get the controls down. There isn't much for me to talk about with Entryway, it's a simple level. I don't have anything extra to talk about after that, so let's just go on to the next level. As the sign proudly says, you are welcome to Cotton Town. Acting as this game's pizza scape, Cotton Town is a romp through a vibrant, clock-filled city, along with a quick journey into the main clock tower. This level introduces one new enemy, along with our first transformation. The cotton-coated transformation is functionally the opposite to Pizza Tower's night transformation. While Knight Pepino is unable to run, grab, and is forced into sliding down slopes due to the heavy armor, Cotton Coated Pizzell is able to double jump, float through the air, and spin in multiple directions to kill enemies, destroy blocks, and feed chocolate frogs. While in this transformation, Cotton Candy platforms can be stood on, though spinning down will let you pass through them. The only enemy introduced is the Cotton Wizard. From this point forward, I don't know any of the enemy's actual names, so I'm just making stuff up. Much like the Pizzards... Pizzards? Pizzards? I'm gonna say Pizzards. Much like the Pizzards in older builds of Pizza Tower, Cotton Wizards throw lightning bolts at Pizzell, coating her in cotton candy should you touch one. Fortunately for her, the cotton-coated transformation is removed by taking damage from, say, a s'more knight or touching water located throughout the level. The secrets aren't too hard to find here. The first secret is next to the first locked door. The second secret is in the room sky high, and is behind a very obvious breakable wall. And the final secret is in the very next room, behind another breakable wall on a ledge. Cotton Town's layout definitely focuses more on vertical platforming thanks to the cotton-coated transformation's increased mobility. There's plenty of room for you to learn cotton-coated Pizzell's moveset, and plenty of moments to run extremely fast. There's one notable problem spot in Cotton Town, though. In the room Frog Hop, there's a small secret area with a few big candies and some breakable blocks. Then, it seems like you're trapped there. The floor doesn't let you build up enough speed to climb the wall, and an uppercut is barely unable to reach the lower ledge. If you didn't know that pressing jump immediately following a grab will put you into a long jump that can lead into a mock run, well you'd think you softlocked yourself. Other than that, the level is great fun. Another great level to get yourself acclimated to the game. And you better take advantage of that, as our next level is much more challenging than the past two. But before that, let's talk about this game's flair. Considering it's a Pizza Tower fan game, much of Sugary Spire's flair is inherited from Pizza Tower. The art style is heavily inspired by cartoons from the 90s, just leaning away from shows like Ren and Stimpy and closer towards things like Spongebob. It's a much softer style, and is a bit less grotesque as Pizza Tower is, for lack of a better word. Though that doesn't mean it can't also have a slice of Pizza Tower's horror elements. They're just much more subtle. In Pizza Tower, there's quite a lot of horror elements in the game, from levels taking place in dungeons, graveyards, and haunted castles, to creepy decorations like tormented pizzas, off-putting masks, and some dead dude stuffed in a pizza suit. Pizza Tower has a lot of horror elements. Even the boss of the fourth floor is a classic horror trip, and is also just straight up freaky. However, Sugary Spire's horror elements take a much subtler approach. And when I say subtler, well, I say subtler, when in actuality it's just that there aren't levels and bosses themed around horror crap. Really, the most horror-inspired things in the game are the backgrounds during Sugar Rush. Every background in every level changes to be much darker and twisted during Sugar Rush, to the point that some are downright unsettling. 
machines turn into monsters, giant bears attack cities, and signs tell you to run. Though one of my favorite examples has to be the floating clocks in Cotton Town. Normally, they're just regular clocks, but during Sugar Rush, their fronts have been torn off, revealing eyes staring back at you from the darkness, eldritch horrors crawling their way out, and even a simple smiley face is made off-putting by the addition of white dots and ink dripping down. It's all wonderfully horrific. A smaller thing that changes during Sugar Rush are the Convecti. They all become really worried and usually have something extra added to them, like the marshmallow being on fire, the chocolate getting a bat, and the s'more getting his fork and shield. I really hope the rest of the game gets more horror themed stuff, maybe even a full horror level with Pizza Tower's Pizza Scare and Don't Make a Sound. Anyway, on to the next level. Welcome to the Ancient Molasses Swamp, owned by Molasse. With the level paralleling ancient cheese, it starts out in the swamp itself, featuring the new Molasses Geysers. These geysers appear as small piles of dirt with steam puffing out of the cracks. Hitting these piles of dirt with your ground pound will cause boiling molasses to burst out from the ground, propelling pizza upwards. They'll eventually calm back down and return to the ground. This is the main gimmick for the swamp section, but you'll soon be transitioning to an ancient temple, filled with boiling molasses and fling frogs. Boiling molasses is pretty simple, touch it to get sent back to the beginning of the room. Fling frogs are quite fun, however. They are effectively a reskin of the Mr. Pinch enemies that appear in Pizza Tower's Oh Shit. Rather than pickpocketing you, however, instead they trap you in their magical candies and fling you upwards. There's also streaks of sticky syrup stuck onto walls and floors that make it harder to jump, like the cheese and don't make a sound. The only enemies introduced here are the... Uh, uh, they act like pincers, look like bananas, so... Bananas. This is a banana. Like I said, bananas act just like pincers in Pizza Tower, so when they notice you, they charge forward after a brief moment. They seem to move faster and are much lower to the ground while charging, making them quite a pain to deal with. As for secrets, the first is hidden behind a wall in the room sticky and wet, the second is in the room this used to be a gallery behind a breakable block, and the third is right after the long Temple of Goop room behind a wall with no indication of it being there. This level is the first to truly test your capabilities with Pete's Elf's moveset. If you haven't gotten everything down yet, which you haven't, this level, especially the Sugar Rush sequence, will test your patience a lot. The one notable trouble spot is in the Temple of Goop room that I mentioned earlier. There's one section where you have to use a big marshmallow to conserve momentum and break a jawbreaker block, before quickly ducking under a one tile high gap, then immediately standing back up to kill a banana and jump up a wall to destroy another jawbreaker block. I can get it down easily now, but I got stuck here when I first played this level. I had to restart the level to try it again. I suppose now is as good a time as any to talk about the controls, Pizzell's moveset, and the nitpicks I have with it. Pizzell controls practically identically to Pepino, with a few differences. There's of course the mock run, ground pound, super jump, grab, all the usuals are here. Super taunts, uppercuts, and parries are still here as well. Even She even has an extra move in the form of her tumble. If you repeatedly press grab while Pizza is in her grab animation, she'll tumble forward, killing enemies on contact. She won't stop tumbling until you don't press grab for a few seconds. It's surprisingly useful and can clear out lines of enemies as well as a mock run game. However, there are some tweaks to Pizza's moves that I don't entirely agree with. Pepino can start climbing up walls at just Mach 1, barely a sprint, and can even grab onto a wall to start climbing. Pizzell, however, takes a longer time to reach Mach 1 than Pepino does, meaning that if you're trapped in a hole with a very small amount of ground to walk on, you cannot escape, and grabbing onto a wall only makes Pizzell bounce off of it, ruining another way of escaping the hole. You'd have to perform the long jump I detailed earlier to escape such a predicament. Your slide also doesn't feel as good as Pepino's. It's basically impossible to get back up from a slide if you're on a slope. And if you weren't running at Mach 2 before the slide, you'd have to wait for Pizzell to stop sliding to do anything. It's annoying, but not a deal breaker. As for the controls, well, it's still just Pizza Tower, however without proper controller support. I can still play it with a controller thanks to Steam, however there are some issues that come with no controller support. Firstly, remapping controls is not a thing in the game, obviously. You can remap controls for the keyboard, but not for the controllers. Secondly, and more impactful to me, you cannot turn off super jumping and ground pounding with a joystick, thanks to there being no controller support. 
and I have trouble playing platformers with a keyboard, so this really does hurt the gameplay experience. However, I still get used to it all, and I played through the entire demo. Hopefully though, they do add in controller support. If not in demo 2, then hopefully the final version. Anyway, these issues with the controls really rear their head in Molasses Swamp, but fortunately they're not in the next level. Molasses Swamp is a good level once you get used to the controls on level layout, but it does have a good ending to the sugar rush. Now, the next level has a slightly different issue. Welcome to our fourth and final level, Sugar Shack Mines. Taking the place of Blood Sauce Dungeon, this level takes place in a giant mining cave run by little dwarves. Before I talk about the level's main gimmick, however, I want to talk about the secrets and the new enemy first. The first new enemy added is the, uh... What the hell is this thing? Uh, this is Daryl. Yeah, these are Daryls. A yeah, Daryl is a funky looking ball of cotton candy with a cone on top. It hops around and hurts you if touched from the top or while it's jumping. They're not really a big threat, they don't appear too often. The other enemy that is added are the uh, Finnish fish. They're not Swedish, they're Finnish. These guys act identically to the flying anchovies from Pizza Tower, so they're basically aerial bananas. If they hit a wall, they'll be stunned and fall to the ground, recovering soon after. As for the secrets, they're not too hard to find. The first is in the room excavation site, hidden in an alcove accessed by a super jump. The layout of that secret should probably be changed a bit, it's really easy to get yourself trapped. The second secret is in the room Jawbreaker Center, behind a very obvious breakable wall past a pool of boiling sugar. The final secret is in the room Even Straighter Drop, behind a suspicious line of skulls. Now to talk about the level's gimmicks, both of which I've got bones to pick with. The first are the dwarves and the donuts. Partway through the level you'll come across Rosette and her little shop. She gives you a box of donuts when you walk up to her, and those donuts are to be delivered to dwarves next to Pillars of Sugar. The dwarves will blow up the pillars if you give them donuts, allowing you access to, usually, a confecti or sometimes a path forward. My main issue with this is that it leads to a lot of interconnecting paths and not an obvious path to follow. Not only that, many of the confecti are on side paths that people playing for the first time might miss. When I played this level for the first time, I only got the marshmallow and candy confecti because I couldn't find any of the other confecti thanks to all the connected paths and side paths. I also didn't really learn the layout of the level my first time through, which I was able to do for the other three levels. I'm not saying the devs should remove the interconnecting paths, it's a cool idea, I just think the main path should be a bit more obvious for new players. The other gimmick is the minecarts. These things are the only way to pass over purple rails, and they tend to kill the pace of the level. You're forced into these things most of the time, and you lose all the speed you had going in and have to build it back up again. They also tend to have some clipping issues, though it doesn't seem consistent. However, the most egregious thing about them is how you get out of them. You cannot leave them by pressing a button, you have to hit a wall or a slope to make the cart explode, allowing you to keep going on foot. But whenever the cart explodes, you are launched into the air and forced to tumble on the ground for a second before getting back up. This just killed the pace and speed I had going, so hopefully they're adjusted later on, though they're not the most horrible thing ever to exist. The sections where you use the minecarts to escape a runaway train are really cool however, I love those parts. Sugar Shack Mines is a fun level to run through, but it only becomes good when you actually know how the gimmick works. It's definitely the roughest level in the demo, and could use some reworks. And with that, all the levels are completed! So, that was Sugary Spire. All in all, it's a Pizza Tower fan game with a lot of potential. It just needs a little work in some few spots. And hopefully the next demo will be a wonderful time. I'll be sure to do a video covering Demo 2 when that finally releases. Before you go, however, I have one last thing to talk about. Sugary Spire's music, much like Pizza Tower's music, is absolutely banging. While I would say that they did not need to go so hard, they absolutely did to match what Pizza Tower did. Obviously the music of the game has been playing throughout the video, though some of my personal favorites are Steamy Cotton Candy, Pizzano's gnarly action-packed theme tune,
and glucose getaway. However, my absolute top favorite isn't even get in the game yet. Sweet Release of Death is planned to be the lap 2 theme for the game, and it goes hard. Alright, that's enough sick tunes. That's all I gotta mention about Sugary Spire. Peace. Yo, Editing Spectre here. Thanks for watching. While I don't say this often, if you enjoyed this, please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I want the channel to keep growing, and that's the only way I will. There's a lot more Sugary Spire stuff I could have talked about, but I didn't find the room for in this video. Hopefully I'll talk about that stuff when Demo 2 comes out. There's plenty more Pizza Tower content coming soon, as I should be getting a new graphics card soon. Alright, see you all later, for real this time.